Hello valued viewers and welcome back to the Reapers. Today's topic is the F4E fuel system. The purpose of the presentation today is to provide a brief description of the fuel system and how the crew can interact with it to provide a safe and effective operation. The F4E fuel system is duplicated. That means the pump and feed arrangement is the same for both engines and they share all the same cells and tanks. There are seven fuel cells on the aircraft aligned along the center line of the aircraft. In addition, we have a wing tank in each wing. Total fuel capacity for the normal fuel system is just over 12,000 pounds. We also have the ability to provide external tanks the right and left external tank have 370 gallon capacity or about 2,400 pounds. The center line tank has a 600 gallon capacity. All told with all three external tanks, a little over 20,800 pounds. Cell number one is the feed cell for both engines and remaining normal fuel cells two through six have a variety of means in which to provide fuel to the engine feed tank. Cell number seven is a reserve tank and won't begin transferring until the total fuel in one and two falls below 1,800 pounds. Fuel transfer from the external tanks is provided by engine bleed air. The setup provides a number of features that are advantageous to the crew. First off, normal operation is automatic. In other words, the fuel will feed in such a way that all the fuel can be consumed by the engines without any input from the crew. The second, because of the feeding sequence, the aircraft will maintain its center of gravity without crew interaction. And a third feature is in the event of the loss of one engine, the system is designed such that remaining engine will feed off the fuel from both wing tanks, allowing the aircraft to remain balanced laterally. The one exception to the fully automatic functioning of the system is that fuel cannot be transferred from the three external tanks simultaneously. You can only do it either from the center line tank or the right and left external tanks. First off is the fuel gauge here on the upper part of the right main console. It has two parts. Total internal fuel is reflected on this gauge times 10. So right now we have about 12,000 pounds of fuel in the internals. There are no gauges for the external tanks and we'll have to check their status in another way. The top part, this tape here, shows the amount of fuel that is in cells 1 through 6 or the normal cells. If I wanted to check the fuel for some unknown reason for cell number seven, I'd merely actuate this switch here, the check engine feed tank switch, and it will show me that right now there's about 1,400 pounds of fuel there, which should stay there until the cells one and two are depleted. In addition, we have a couple of fuel flow meters both indicating pounds per hour times a thousand. Right now, it looks like we're burning about 8,000 pounds per hour. Unlike the Hornet or the Viper or other aircraft in DCS, there's no automated bingo call out that the system will provide you. Instead, Jester will query you at some point during the flight if your fuel gets too low. A standard figure for bingo fuel would probably be something like 4,000 pounds. We have four lights associated with the fuel indicating system. It's the fuel low level light here, which indicates when uh, a sensor in cell two determines that there's less than 1,650 pounds of fuel. We also have the left, center, and right external fuel tank lights. Anytime these lights are illuminated, it's because their valves are open and there is no fuel flowing from the tanks. 
the center tank light is on because even though there's uh, fuel in the tank, flow from that tank has stopped because of consumption requirements. The only sure way of telling whether the status of the tanks is empty or not is if you refer back to your fuel gauge and under normal situation what you'll see is the gauge oscillating between 11,800 pounds and 12,000 pounds as the tanks fuel and uh, are refueled. You will know that the external tanks are empty once the fuel quantity here gets below about 11,000 and you'll have three green lights, the left, center, and right external fuel tank lights. There are two other situations when those external tank lights will illuminate. One is when you put the air refuel switch to extend and the bleed air overpressure is released from the system. And the other time is when the aircraft is running low of fuel and the automatic fuel transfer is activated, which will force those valves open. All right, let's look at the fuel system control panel. These two switches here have to do with air refueling. They'll be covered in a later module. The boost pump switches control the function of the boost pumps in the forward uh, number one cell. They are there to provide fuel to the engines in all attitudes. In other words, it can be upside down and the fuel will still be supplied to the engine. This switch here controls the transfer of fuel from the external tanks. Note that we can either do the center tank or the outboard tank, but not all three simultaneously. Uh, normally, if you have fuel in the tanks, you want it to be in one of these two positions. The only exception might be is if you're at a planned air refueling. Air refueling fills the external tanks at about a quarter of the rate of the uh, internal tanks. So with a planned air refueling, you might, might consider turning this switch off. This switch controls the transfer of the fuel from the internal ring tanks to the fuel cells. With this switch here on, the external transfer switch on, internal wing transfer is inhibited. So when your external tanks are depleted, you need to move this switch to the off position to allow fuel to transfer from your internal wing tanks. This is the dump switch. It will dump all the fuel from your internal wing tanks in about 15 minutes. These are the indications you'll get when an external tank has been depleted and there's no more fuel available. First off, we have the switch in the outboard external transfer position. Both lights are on, indicating the valves are open, but no fuel is moving, and our fuel quantity is less than 11,800 pounds. To rectify the situation, I'll move the external transfer switch to the center position. Notice that the light have extinguished. Our fuel value is increasing. When we refuel the central fuel cells, you'll note that this light, the center external tank light, will activate and our fuel transfer has been terminated. This again indicating that the valve is open but there's no fuel being transferred. Once the center tank has been depleted, I'll have the same type of indications. I'll have the center external fuel tank light on. Fuel value will be less than 11,800 pounds. And in that situation, what I will want to do is turn this switch off. With this switch not in the off position, fuel will not transfer from your internal wing tanks. The last situation I'd like to talk about is jettisoning your external wing tanks. It's fairly straightforward. All you have to do is take the station switch here, place it in the stores position, which is down. Select the stations you would like to get rid of and push the jettison button. My personal technique, if I have external 
uh, twin tanks installed is I will position this down to the storage position before flight because it's a little difficult to see. That's it for fuel discussion. It's fairly straightforward. The only thing you have to worry about as far as management is transferring fuel from the external tanks into the uh, center fuel cells. I hope this uh, has helped and that you have a good day. Push out.